I did not hire from the top down early on. I hired who I was able to afford. So I hired a lot of people that were really, really good soldiers, but I didn't have somebody with franchise experience and somebody that could have mentored me and said, other than I had somebody in franchise development with a lot of franchise experience, but I needed somebody with some industry experience. So I was learning everything, trial by fire, and learning by coming to the IFA and all the conferences and talking to people. But it's an awful stressful way of growing a business. I'm with Sherry, the president of Fran Fund. Sherry, nice to meet you. How are you? Today? Nice to meet you. Thanks for being on. Thank you so much. So why don't you share with the audience what Fran Fund is? What do you guys do and what makes you different? I'd love to. Uh, Fran Fund stands for Franchise Funding. We work with aspiring franchisees and expanding franchisees across the country to build a funding solution that's customized to their specific situation. And how many IFAs is this for you now? Oh my goodness, um, 15. <laughs> Anything that makes this one different or maybe a couple of big takeaways you've had from this particular conference? Well, I think um, I love the term smart franchising. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one that I hope all franchisors are taking to heart and making sure that they are putting people in business that are ready to be in business and they're providing them with the tools to be successful. That's the power of franchising is to be able to follow a recipe and be successful. And if the recipe's not right, mm -hmm. the success doesn't come with that. So I hope that message was heard loud and clear. I've got Chris Stewart from Bloomin' Blinds. Chris, how are you? Excellent. How are you? Doing well. Great to see you again. You too. So Chris was already on our podcast that the episode's going to be airing soon. So uh, thanks for thanks for stopping by here. It's a pleasure. I came to see you and missed you earlier and glad to have a second chance. Glad you came on by. All right, so why don't you start by telling the audience a little bit, what is Bloomin' Blinds? What do you guys do? Yep. Uh, Bloomin' Blinds window covering franchisor specializing in shutters, shades, home automation. Um, the franchise in franchisee in the home is the is our jam. That's what we do best is keeping people connected and there's a product deliverable at the end of it. So it's the human interaction and the relationship part that I think Bloom and Blinds excels at more than uh, probably the widget that we offer. Right, right. Now I remember us chatting when we did the podcast together, but I'd love for you to kind of share with the audience, like really what makes you guys different? Because there's some businesses that are out there, yep. but you guys, are, you guys do something a little differently. Uh, well, there's three brothers that, that run the shop, so that's part of it. And we, we found it. I used to be the guy in the van doing it. Um, the repair part of it is probably a the service deliverable differentiator for it, but I think the the heaviest piece that keeps us separate from the rest is the is the emphasis on the relationship, um, the long term duration of that, um, regardless of the transactional value. I'm here with Eric from Zor Forum. Eric, how are you? I'm phenomenal. How are you? I'm doing outstanding. Thanks Good. for thanks for chatting with me. Good. All right. So why don't you tell everybody here what is Zor Forum? Well, Zor Forum is a collection of mastermind groups for emerging franchisors. We help them to navigate what we call the Zor Path, right? We're all on it. We're, we're trying to avoid all of the pitfalls, navigate our way to success. Zor Forum allows you to group with uh, five to eight of your peers and navigate that path together. Yeah, so for, uh, for, for folks that maybe are new to franchising, but they're familiar with entrepreneur organization EO or YPO or Vistage. Like this is just about for franchising and you're learning from some of the biggest and best franchisors, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, it's the main difference is you're in the room with those who are on the same journey that you're on. We're all Zors here, right? Mm -hmm. We don't put you in the room with your competitors per se, but you know, even though com competition is kind of loose. We, we discussed that a little bit earlier. Uh, the word competition means to turn together, 
and we're all in the same race. We're together, right? right? So your competition can actually make you faster, make you better, make you smarter, right? And if you're all on the same mission, right, as we are in franchising, right, we're we're helping people to build generational wealth. We're opening up opportunities to others. We're helping them to navigate and, and work our systems to achieve success. I have Christina Parsons from marketing.com. Christina, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for talking with me. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I got to ask you, uh, what is marketing.com? <laughs> what, what, what do we do here at marketing.com? What do you guys do at marketing.com? <laughs> the obvious. Amazingly, we get that question a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we like to say that we do pretty much all things marketing under one roof. Um, so we do um, a lot of commercial printing, uh, direct mail, um, fulfillment and kitting. Um, we also do a lot of envelopes, um, digital marketing services, creative services. So franchise orders can come to us and we can help support their franchisees across pretty much everything, including okay. signage. Um, and we have our dot platform, which is a SaaS platform that allows them to go in and set up their through channel marketing campaigns. Um, so if they're launching um, a new initiative at a retail location, we can package up the signage, all of the printed materials that they would need, um, but as well as support their social media campaigns and make sure it's all brand compliant. So they can get their promo, all You're that all stuff. We're all inclusive. We're all inclusive. One stop shop. <laughs> One stop shop, right? We got to live up to the name marketing.com. <laughs> okay, which leads me to the most important question. The domain name marketing.com. I mean, come on. I how did how, how long ago did we get that name? About three years ago. That's so it? it wasn't that long ago. Yes. Um, I don't I don't want to know how much money it was, but I know it was not cheap. It was not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> like it was not cheap. I am with Emily Jones from Profit Keeper. Emily, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. It's great to finally meet you it in is. person. Long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Emily, tell us what Profit Keeper is for those few people out there that don't know and what you guys that do that are a little different than others. Yeah. So Profit Keeper is a financial management platform um, in exclusive to franchises. So we take and consolidate the financials. We push them up to the franchisor level for a brand overview, and then we... Um, present them back to the franchisees in a digestible visual format um, in visual benchmarks, data, um, anything of that sort. And so it's the unit level economics that we give back to the franchisees. And I think something that's very different for us is we are super visual by design. And so a lot of franchisees, I started on support and so I talk day in and day out to the franchisees and they, they're not, you know, they have no history in finance, anything like that. So talking to them and walking them through it, like the visual, aspect of it is huge you know the reports that kind of get inundated with information kind of um, analysis paralysis like there's so much information that the visual benchmarking and stuff is huge and our support team sitting with them walking through I'm a little biased because I came from support but it's I mean it's huge we really really hold their hand through the whole process that's awesome so. I, I am a big fan of your company and I'll admit that when I started out franchising I did not even collect my franchisees financials okay. And the reason, I had a reason behind it. My attorney said, don't collect them unless you're gonna actually do something with it, yeah. right? Because if you're gonna collect them but not do anything with it, and the mistake I made also was that I had an assumption that n franchisees knew how to manage their financials, and I was more focused on the actual operations of the business. But you find that that's really common, right? Most franchisees are, do not have a financial background yeah. or it's their first business that they're in. Yeah, no, especially new franchisees. I'm glad that I had the experience like talking to franchisees day in and day out, training them, onboarding them. Because I had some franchisees, I had to explain to them what a p &L was. They, you know, the very basics of, of the business. I'm glad that I had that experience because it really, you know, helped me understand that like, owning a business there's so many different aspects to it in the financials just one aspect and they they need help you know they don't know so i think profit keeper really simplifies it and helps them understand the information and how to where are areas of opportunity where are areas of weakness um, and what to really focus on hi guys I have Lauren Fisher from Fish Consulting and 919 Marketing, and, yes. a franchise legend, sir. <laughs> How are you? Good. Nice to see a legend of another legend like yourself. <laughs> it's very nice. Doing well. Does Doing that, well. Does that mean we're just kind of like older? 
Yes, it's the gray hair that does it, right? For sure. That's for what sure. franchising does to you. That's, that's for sure, it does that. <laughs> it gives you a lot of gray a lot faster. So Lauren, we got a lot to talk about. We have a very short period of time. Yes. I mean, let's talk about 919 Marketing. Right. First of all, I mean, incredible company. Why don't you share with the audience, what makes 919 Marketing different mm -hmm. uh, than some of the stuff that's out there? Right, it's a great question, Frank. I think 919 Marketing's been around for probably more than 20 years. And one of the things that is, makes us very different now is we have a product called 919 Insights that actually helps uh, franchisors' websites perform better, actually influences their content better, and even influences their architecture. Um, so that really helps them find prospects and consumers in a lot better way. Mm -hmm. Cool. How many IFAs is this for you? Oh gosh, it's like 19, I think, is IFAs. I mean, I've been fortunate I've served on the board in 18 and 19. I was a supplier chair in 19, and so you know we're all in on the franchise business model. So it's uh, it's been great, it's been great. Absolutely. Okay, so I, you know, every year is something a little bit different. Is there a, a new takeaway that you've gotten from this year's conference or two? It's interesting. You know, it's like every year you get a little bit of something. I think the highlight I would say of the conference was listening to Deion Sanders. Oh yeah. And I just, you know, I didn't expect it to be as meaningful as it was. You know, I, I figured you'd get his one-liners and everything else, but he really, it was motivational. Like I've been thinking about some of the things he says, and and really I've been talking to my wife and sharing some of the stuff like that, and it it, it, it was it made a lot more of a connection to me than I thought. It, it, it was secured by mother, so I ran with the image and. Uh, mantra of prime time. Some of you hated it, some of you loved it, depending on what team you were opposed to. But I did my job. It was never a game that you visited, baseball or football, that you said, oh my God, he was garbage, he let me down. It never, never, never was that, because I was playing for my mom. That was my wife. I talked to my wife about it too, and I, I talked about what is our rabbit. Yes. What, is, what is your rabbit? Interesting, wow. You know, um, I've been really fortunate over the last like six months that uh, a lot of things have come together for me from a business perspective. Um, I was able to sell Fish Consulting um, and, and work with 919. We have a similar private equity owner. Um, so a kind of the, my rabbit has changed. I would say my rabbit was initially to, you know, build a business, successful business and sell that and be able to provide for my family for the future. And now my rabbit is a little bit different. I'm now challenged to kind of help a company and build it as well and see if I could scale what I've done for my smaller company with a larger one. So mm -hmm. the rabbit is moving for me, which is really exciting. I have Linda and Jeff from First Choice Business Brokerage. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Doing We're loving great. the IFA. Yeah, yeah. Having a great time. Yeah. Is this your first IFA? No, it's not our first, but it's been a little while, and Phoenix is a beautiful place to have it. We've been really enjoying the weather. Yeah. Nice. Where's home for you guys? Las Vegas. Oh, but... all right. Yeah. All right, so it's not as, it's not as wild here. No, 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 no but no. we enjoy no. it. We enjoy it it's nonetheless. It's enjoyable, <laughs> yes. Nice. So let's talk about first choice. So what exactly do you guys do, and what do you specialize in? We're in the business of selling businesses. So we help sellers find the right buyers for their business. We're trying to help them exit their business and move on to the next chapter in their life. And we've been doing this since 1994. And right now just we're just, years. just yeah. uh, we're about close to 100 territories for about 70 plus uh, franchisees. Wow, that's great. Okay, so as soon as you told me what you guys did, immediately my mind went to, we are about to enter the greatest transfer of generational wealth because of course the boomers or baby boomers are getting ready to retire right the next five ten years yep. what do you anticipate with this greatest transfer of wealth as we know a lot of kids don't want their parents business you know this business so well I'm going to recruit you now <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's incredible there's they're expecting about 12 million businesses to transfer over the next 10 12 years mm -hmm. and we're expecting of course to see a big boom in our business from that and there are only about 4,000 full-time business brokers servicing all of these the clients entire US only 4,000 business brokers so it's a pretty good market for yeah. us. That that transfer of wealth is going to be amazing. I'm really curious to know how you know how this whole thing is going to end up. Of course, uh, I think it's also what's most interesting is the percentage of businesses that never get sold. They, well, they, they just close. They don't know that there's business brokers out there. They think, oh, do I talk to my attorney? Do I talk to my CPA? Do I talk to my realtor? None of those people actually help with the transfer when you're trying to find the right buyer. An attorney or a CPA will get involved sometimes, but they're not helping you find the right buyer. Yeah, many times for us it's educating the public that business brokers actually exist. They, they know their realtor, they know their commercial broker. They don't know what a business broker is. So it's really educational on our part. 
I have Gary Gerke, the CEO of Clarity. Gary, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you today, Frank? Doing well. Thanks it's a great day here at uh, the IFA 2024. It is. It yeah. is. How many IFAs is this for you now? Uh, enough that I lost count. I oh. think it's 14. <laughs> really? Oh my goodness. Okay. What's been uh, What's been maybe one or two of your top takeaways from this particular IFA? Oh, this this one. Um, the, the keynote speakers uh, um, have been fantastic. Uh, always the educational sessions are uh, timely and what in the subject matter is always relevant to uh, any business but especially franchising mm -hmm. yeah absolutely would you tell uh, tell the audience a little bit what clarity is what you guys do and what, what makes you guys different sure Frank so uh, clarity voice is a cloud-based communication system so a lot of people know us or think of us as voice over internet mm -hmm. um, which is fairly common throughout, um, you know, throughout the business community. Mm -hmm. um, we specialize in helping franchisors create a, a, a platform and a mechanism for their franchisees that optimizes the customer experience, ultimately leading to um, uh, uh, better customer engagement mm -hmm. and conversion of uh, prospects to sales. Sure. Oh, now, I mostly talk to emerging franchise founders. So I'd love to get your take on what's maybe some advice that you give to the emerging client that comes on board. What are some of the things that they maybe, they don't think of that you share with them that's so important for their particular business starting out? Sure, so uh, for emerging brands and, and being an entrepreneur myself um, in, in the franchising world, number one is uh, leverage the uh, uh, community around the IFA, um, there's specific uh, emerging franchising uh, opportunities to network, uh, different shows, attend those, and you're going to find that you're going to connect with um, uh, 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 people who are uh, who have already done what you're 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 doing. Right. right. Even if they're competitive, um, they're willing to help. Uh, Lane. Um, Besides the, obviously, franchise law that you practice, one of the things I absolutely love about what you've done is creating conferences that are different. Would you share a little bit about what's coming up on the Unconference? Sure, so we have our ski conference that we've done for almost 17 or 18 years in Park City coming up in just three or four weeks. That will be totally sold out. It'll be people skiing all over the place. We only have two hours of programming from that event where people are you know, talking about the most pressing issues and then people hit for extreme networking on the slopes and uh, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be awesome. All right, and then one more thing, this Young Conference. So whose idea was this? So it was the young guy's idea. It was Zach and Ryan. They said they wanted their own conference and wanted their own people and their own presenters and that, that's, I think we're in our fourth year of that and that also will sell out and it's in a, an amazing spot, the Chicago Athletic Association, which has its conference area on the basketball court. I have John from Imaginuity. How are you? Great. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for being on. Appreciate it. What Pleasure. in the world is Imaginuity? What a cool name. Yeah, well, thank you. Imaginuity, we are a, a digital marketing agency out of Dallas. Uh, the DNA is comes from the name, so it's imagination plus ingenuity. So it's all about just kind of thinking smarter and, and bringing franchise solution, marketing solutions together for franchise clients. That's awesome. So uh, I interview a lot of emerging founders, That's uh, hence the podcast. Right. What do you see some of the challenges specifically with emerging franchise companies that you, that you work with? Well, I mean, marketing is so important for brands like that, and yet they don't really have the budget you know, to do things they need to do at the scale that they need to do them on. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of you know, understanding kind of like the, you know, the basics. So first of all, understanding kind of that overall purpose of the brand, why is the brand in business, what value do they provide to the customers, mm -hmm. then building out you know, messaging around that sort of purpose. Uh, also, uh, having, you have to have a website, right? You have to have a website that kind of brings that brand to life, that kind of tells that story, uh, so that you can send people to there to, to get the experience, whether it's a customer that, that you want to try to bring into the franchise, mm -hmm. or whether it's new franchisees if you're trying to build the system. That's awesome. What's been maybe one or two of your biggest takeaways here at the event? Uh, well, obviously AI, you know, is all over the place. And so, you know, people are really interested in it. I don't think they realize that they've already been using it, right? So algorithms are AI. And so Google Maps is AI. So people have been using it for a long time. 
but now I think you know it's an opportunity to understand, okay, how can you kind of bring it down out of the, I don't quite understand it, to something that's now easy for me to just go in, type a prompt, and all of a sudden I might have an image or I might have a video that I can use to help my marketing efforts. Tell me about having an AI spokesperson. Yeah, so um, very, very exciting. We actually launched this this past week. We have a client that has uh, manages over 300 shopping centers across the country. And so we have created a virtual spokesperson called Cindy that we've created through AI. And she is now the spokesperson for this mall. So if she was, in, she's at the mall at San Francisco Center. Okay. So she's talking about everything that's going on at the mall. So come out this weekend, we're having the Christmas tree lighting, are we gonna do go, go ice skating, or there's a band that's playing this weekend. So right now, she's just the spokesperson of the mall. And then, uh, depending on what sort of traction we get around that, we can then replicate her across multiple shopping centers in different parts of the country, change ethnicity, change age, just to basically match the demographics of the of the community around that shopping center. And Cindy's not going to ask for a raise. She's not. There's no, no not labor issues. We can we can She's ask her to work. Do something crazy over the weekend that we have to deal with on a Monday morning. <laughs> Uh, and so right now, she's just the spokesperson for the mall, but a 2.0 version could very easily be retailers within the mall now want her to promote something that's going on this weekend. So Neiman Marcus could pay the shopping center to have Cindy deliver a message for Neiman Marcus for that weekend or if they're trying to support a sale. John, can you put some people's minds at ease on how Cindy will not really replace people but create new jobs for other people and other skill sets? Yeah, exactly. So, um, first of all, you have to indicate in any sort of post that this is virtual, right? You can't pretend, you know, that this is real. But, you know, using AI for something like this, like a lot of other use cases, is that it just gives you time back to think about things that are really, really important for you to do, right? So, another example of how we're using AI. So, we have another franchise client that has 1,500 units across the country, and they all have their own website. So they may decide, we need to write new content for you know, all of these websites. Well, a couple years ago, it's our copywriters writing 1,500 different pages of copy you know, at a very high hourly rate that takes a long, long time. Well, right now, through AI, you can create 80, 85% of that content within minutes, and then the writers are now just being editors, and they're able to put more time into customizing that content for a shopping center or for a local franchisee rather than spending 95% of their time just keying in the same copy over and over again, not giving them any time to think, right? So it's not, you know, one of the things that I, one of the great quotes about AI that I love is that AI is not going to replace your job, but somebody that uses AI very well might. Welcome to 2024. I have Justin Ray, CEO of Cinch. Justin, how are you? Good, how about you? I'm doing well, what's going on over there? Good, just uh, enjoying the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. So tell me, what is Cinch, what do you guys do, and what makes you guys different than other companies that are out there besides wearing the, uh, the Vision Pro? Yeah, yeah. we uh, we wear the Vision Pro sometimes when uh, because we're really technically advanced, and um, we do a lot of data science and marketing automation, and that's really where we shine, is being able to look at the analytics, understand what the behavior of customers is, or, or is going to be, and then using our tool to then communicate out with customers on that. When we send communications, we send emails, text messages, that's always generating new data points that are really great for data science to be able to then start analyzing the behavior in the future of the customer again. And so that's where it really shines, is we create this really great flywheel between the data that you have today, using that data, running data science on it, and then using that knowledge to send communication to customers. Mm -hmm. And then, again, the new data that's generated in, um, creates new iterations for the data science. Wow, that's incredible. So, like, if, I, if I'm an emerging founder, of a franchise, where do I even start with you guys? Like, what do you recommend specifically for emerging founders? You know, they, they're starting out, it's so important to be able to have that data and to be able to use it for your benefit, but you know, this is, they're hit with so many different things. What do you usually start with with emerging guys? Yeah, I think just like anything in a franchise, you got to figure out what your base operations are. Mm -hmm. Figure out what what is the experience and the journey that you want your customers to go through as they come in and experience the uh, what you have to offer, right? You figure out what that process is going to be. Start to tweak that until you figure out what really hones in on the the thing that sets you apart, 
and then be able to put together a journey for that. And so inside of Cinch, we call them journeys. It's the customer journey experience that they have as they start from a transaction or prior to the transaction and go through, uh, through repeat transactions with you. All right, it's my pleasure to have Shafiq Mina on the episode. Shafiq, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, thanks for being on. So why don't you tell the audience what you guys do? What's, what's your company, what's your brand, what do you, what do you guys do? Awesome, so uh, our parent company is to inspire kids and we have two brands. Matt Science is the leading enrich science enrichment brand in the world, 30 years in business, 20 plus countries. And our new brand, Crayola Imagine Arts Academy. Um, we want to do the same thing within the arts, with, same thing within the sciences and the arts, mm -hmm. and we're doing it with the biggest brand in art, Crayola. Wow. So, well, I mean, everybody knows who Mad Science is from back in the day. If you've been involved in franchising in the past 20, 30 years, you definitely know the name. You're very kind. We, we, we worked hard to, to achieve, I think, what we achieved. And it was a niche we found many years ago. Yeah. And I think that niche exists today. There's a, there's a lot of money that is being taken out of schools and school systems in the arts. Mm -hmm. And they're so important. So we felt there was an opportunity to do what we did in science and the arts. Mm -hmm. And it's really needed. Mm -hmm. um, I was in an AI session not too long ago, we're here at the IFA, mm -hmm. and I was in an AI session and they were talking about AI and, I, I, it, and the question came up of what are we going to need for our kids to have, I have young kids, what are mm -hmm. my kids going to need to have as skills to compete with AI in 10, 15, 20 years? It's going to get better, right? Sure. So that's what um, Creole Imag Imagine Arts Academy is focusing on, mm -hmm. those skills that I think my kids will need to have. So tell, tell us a little bit more about, we know the Crayola name. Right. Tell us a little bit more about what exactly the franchise concept does. Lovely. So our tagline is art with purpose. Okay. Not that art alone is not good enough, mm -hmm. but we wanted to use art as a platform to teach kids skills that we think are going to be critical. Mm -hmm. Right. So some of the skills, we did a lot of research first of all. We spent about three years researching what was out there, what were the missing pieces in the market. And we identified a few, what we think are the critical skills to have, right? The, and they're the soft skills. I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to blow your mind away. Right. But what's going to distinguish us from computers are going to be things like creativity, conflict resolution, empathy, uh, people management. These are the skills that I think are going to be high paying jobs in the future. So what we did is we created art programs that infuse that learning in, in, in for kids. So one of the biggest surprises for me uh, that I learned was I thought creativity was something you had or you didn't. Mm -hmm. And I would have put myself in the bracket where I'm not creative. Mm -hmm. Well, all the current research on creativity, which surprised me is that creativity is a muscle. The more you practice the creativity muscle, the more creative you are and the more you identify yourself as creative. So if creativity is gonna be so critical in the future, we gotta get our kids trained to practice their creativity muscle. So that's, what, that's one of the things that CIAA, mm -hmm. Not the CIA, CIAA does. I have Lane Clasto from Shrunk 3D. He is a franchisee of Shrunk 3D on his second day. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're very excited. Yesterday was our first day. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, it was about six months in the works to get here. And uh, everyone was really excited. They loved the concept and we had a line. And my wife and I were just kind of running around, didn't know what to do. <laughs> Luckily, the franchise owners were here to help us, so they troubleshot some issues. Um, but it ended up being a very busy, we didn't drink water, we didn't eat. We were just out here, just selling, having a great time. I feel like a kid again. It was a great day. I see it just yeah. in your, your eyes, just like you lit up from this. Yeah, it was it was good. I'm in the corporate world, right? And so we, we jumped into franchising. and. It was uh, better than we expected, for sure. All right, so yeah. let's let me turn you around here for a second, Anthony. Let's let's show this here. So why don't you, why don't you share like what the process is? And I know there's a yeah, whole absolutely. bunch of cameras, so, obviously. So we, these are all of our examples to show you what we offer. Um, all right, so you step in the booth and you just come on in here. All our cameras are in here. There's uh, 90 cameras. It takes two pictures, um, so 180 pictures total. You stand here on the Strunk logo. You look this way. Literally, we click a button on the on the uh, laptop, and it takes the picture in a, a second. And then after that, we go through the pictures, make sure they're uh, they look good, they're in focus. We make sure the client's happy. If they're happy, we we save the picture, and it goes to our design artist, who then uh, takes that picture, all 180 pictures, and makes a 3D photogrammetry model, and then that goes to HP, and HP prints them. What's been your biggest takeaway here at, at the IFA? I'd say the excitement people have for it. 
and uh, the fact that people actually bought it was important <laughs> to me because we thought we know it's a great idea, it's a great concept. Are people going to you know spend the money to get it? And they did, and they and everyone likes it. So I've got Dominique from Bright Fran. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Frank, how are you? Great, great. Um, so tell me, what is Bright Fran? What do you guys do? We consult with franchise companies to help them to grow. And you specifically focus on emerging brands? We do, Frank. We find that people coming into the space need help. They want to grow smarter. They don't want to just do it with lots of bruises, right? They don't want to stumble along the way. So is it typically, Dominique, that someone to come in and say, look, I've got, I've got a business, I want a franchise, and you take them from, from start to finish? Or is somebody who's already franchised their concept and you're kind of getting through the, the grind of franchising? We do both. So somebody that's got a great business concept, that they have proof of concept, that it's going well, they've got profitability and all of that, and they're ready to roll, uh, we will help them to get into franchising and to learn the ropes of franchising, how to franchise responsibility, like we're talking about today. Right. So. What's been uh, one or two of your biggest takeaways here at the IFA? Oh my goodness. I really, some of the general sessions have been amazing and I love Dion Sanders, like his energy, right? <laughs> Talking about how he enjoys life. Like we really need to enjoy life. And that gives us energy to do what we do well. Uh, but then the speaker today that was talking about um, how to get your people energized and connected to the why of what they do. I like the examples he gave on that because that's really where people get their energy from, again, to do a great job and serve clients well. I am with Mandy from Answer Force. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Doing great. Are you enjoying the IFA this year? I am certainly enjoying the IFA. I'm actually graduating with my CFE this oh, year. Congratulations. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Very happy. That's great. All right. So why don't you tell us what is Answer Force? What do you guys do and what makes you guys different? So Answer Force, uh, we are actually a, we're 24-7, 365 live answering. We support Zors and Zs by making sure that they never make, miss a call, as well as to be able to help them scale with their business. So all the way from emerging into becoming an enterprise size where there are 150 um, you know, franchisees and, and really growing, we're able to come in and support them from, from start all the way through. Well, I see it immediately my thought is there's a huge need for your business for just the simple fact of the labor shortage. And as a franchisor uh, or franchisees alike, it's difficult, depending on the, on the business that you're in, of having employees. And this, A, helps that, right? And secondly, it provides a standard at which that your franchisees are getting serviced. Exactly. It really works well with the Fran Dub because... Mm -hmm. As the Zor, a lot of times their promise is to help, you know, um, help assist with that brand awareness and marketing, facilitating those types of needs for, you know, their their Zs. And with having this, it allows for them to really be able to do that because if they're providing these leads or helping provide, you know, brand awareness, helping with the support on their websites, uh, and it's driving traffic there, well, they may not be at the point where they're able to handle all of those calls. Right. And every call is very important, especially in the beginning, because one call is a missed opportunity. So being able to make sure that they have the ability to scale and meet every, or be able to capture every lead is very important and okay. that's where we come in. I am with Marcy Pastorio, the founder and CEO of Maha Juice Bar. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Great. Nice to meet you. Likewise. All right. So I learned that you are a brand new franchisor. Super excited for you. How cool has it been here at the IFA? It's been amazing. It's been an experience. Um, definitely eye-opening and changing my my way of viewing franchising um, I had this whole idea of becoming a franchise and then being here and seeing what the world of franchise actually is really opened my eyes to like new things new ideas and and new mindsets and you have one corporate location that's right we don't have a first franchisee yet nope not yet she we're still working on her we'll all right hopefully soon I love it. I love it. So why don't you tell our audience what Maha is, what you guys exactly do. Tell us about the juice bar and what makes you guys different. Okay. So Maha Juice Bar 
is a healthy restaurant. We are a healthy fast food concept. Uh, our number one seller is our acai. That's what differentiates us from any other juice bar. Uh, we make our acai in-house with uh, only three ingredients every day. So I have someone who comes in every day just to make that. And um, it's 250 calories per base. Um, another cost of, of us that makes us different is we do not use any ice on our smoothies or juices. Everything is fresh made to order. Um, so the customer are getting whole serving of fruits and vegetables which is beneficial for their health so it's, we're not compromising what they're they're looking for um, and also we're different because we're building healthier communities we are there to support not just the young kids but also the adults to, who need a little guidance to to have a better health and in and, and follow the doctor's orders I guess right I am with Andrea and Maggie from Aeon. Ladies, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Great, great. how are you? Doing great. Thanks for joining me. So uh, tell me a little bit about what Aeon is. What do you guys do? Aeon is a uh, well-known large insurance broker, and in particular, Aeon Digital Client Solutions is a part of Aeon that is investing heavily in the small and medium-sized enterprise. And giving all the uh, expertise and the power of Aon behind this very important segment. And part of that is our franchise solution that uh, we're so excited to, to be here and to present. That's awesome. Maggie, is this the, the first IFA for you guys? or? Yes, it is. We're very excited. It's been very engaging. We've met a lot of folks and we've seen a lot of engagement and excitement from the franchisees that are here as well. Kind of blow away your expectations so far? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Actually, it did, believe absolutely. it or not. It really did. <laughs> So I know we've only gone through, well, this technically is day three, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe one of you share with me what are like maybe your one or two top takeaways from the IFA this year? I think for me, it's, um, it's so valuable to see so many folks here of different backgrounds, franchisors, franchisees, uh, vendors, um, and just see the, the level of thought leadership that is coming out of some of the sessions, uh, see the level of engagement. Um, and just be able to, to meet very uh, interesting, very interesting people. And, you know, I think it's just such a powerful event. It really is. Maggie, anything you want to add? I think um, on top of that, just what Andrea said, when we think about small business, when we think about people running their business, this provides a venue for people to see what's state of the art, what's new, mm -hmm. what do they currently have, and how do they, it, does it help them run their franchisee, their franchise location? you know, in the future. Yeah. So really awesome opportunity. That's great. I would say now I've been in franchising just a little over 20 years and probably the biggest surprise for me is the amount of resources of technology, especially as an, for an emerging franchisor, because a lot of the founders, you start out, you bootstrap your business, mm -hmm. you have very limited capital. And as a result, you have very limited resources right. or access that, you know, all the big boy, all the big franchisors had, but right. You guys provide a vehicle for an emerging franchise or to have those access to those same tools. We do, and that's why we're so excited about our solution. We really want this to be an easy way for franchisees and franchisors to, to handle insurance in a, in a sophisticated way, but make it simple for them so that they don't worry about this. We worry about the insurance and they focus on running and growing their businesses. I've got Aaron Zucker from the Zucker Investment Group. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks for having me. Welcome. So uh, what do you think of the IFA so far? It's been great. It's great getting in front of franchisees, franchisors, suppliers. It's been, it's been a great conference so far. I really enjoy being here. First time attending last year, and obviously it was strong enough to justify coming back. So here we are. Awesome. What's been the biggest, the, maybe one or two takeaways you've had of this, this one? Probably meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just meeting, and, and no, seriously, just meeting great people and getting to learn about what other brands and other groups are doing, uh, both on the franchise or franchisee side and seeing uh, you know, what emerging concepts are out there and who's growing and just try to take note of it and see if we can't be along for the ride for anybody's success. Nice. All right, would you share with the audience what exactly is your company, what does Zucker Investment Group do and what yeah. makes you guys different? Yeah, sure. So Zucker Investment Group, uh, forgive the really memorable name, uh, Zig is, is what we like to call it, is based in Charlotte. I founded the company five years ago. Congrats. Thank you, I appreciate that. So it's a company built on retail real estate fundamentals. So we, our backgrounds are you know, leasing shopping centers, et cetera, working for family offices most recently before starting the company. What we did originally was started buying 
you know, well-located, undervalued retail real estate across the country. And we sort of had this transformative thought over the last couple of years, like, hey, we know operators, we know good ones, and we know the brands that are sort of looking for the type of real estate that we go after. What's not shift our focus necessarily, but add a new vertical where we help operators grow and scale, which is why we attend conferences like this, uh, to help, to identify the right operators to work with that maybe have three, five, seven locations that want to get to 30, 50, 70, or beyond that. And so what we do is we help them understand what their growth goals are, identify the trade areas that they want to be in, and we'll either work alongside their tenant representation broker, or can even act as a real estate arm in their site selection process. We'll find that building with, with, or, with a broker or on our own doing, and we'll buy it for them. And we'll not only buy the building, but we'll also provide capital to improve the space to where they can have the appropriate equipment, leasehold improvements, whatever it may be. So operators are able to grow uh, without really having to deploy very much capital. Our thesis is, is on the operator's value, values perspective is, if you are making equivalent or worse returns in your operating business than you are in real estate, you're in the wrong business. So retain your capital on your balance sheet to open up new locations and let us you know, expend our capital to get it out there. And as long as we can get a rent threshold, from the operator that makes sense to them and we're able to monetize it in the way that we do it and everybody wins. Nice, nice. All right, well, I'm gonna go a little off topic off of franchising for a second, but I mean, if you're in the commercial real estate space, I gotta ask you the obvious question. You know about this, a lot of this debt that's gonna be coming due in the next few years in commercial real estate and I, there might be some people watching this going, gosh, I can't wait to, you know, I'd love to get perspective on somebody who's in the business. Sure. So what are your thoughts on this, Aaron? What's gonna happen in the 27, 28, and 29? So, People cite the interest rates being essentially nothing other than the bank spreads in 20 and 21 and 22. What's often lost sight of though is interest rates were still really low prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so even if you borrowed money in 2019, commercial real estate loans are typically set up for around a five year term. So the amortization and how the loan is paid off is, is stretched out anywhere between 20 and 30 years typically, but that loan is still due after five years. And so one of two things has to happen. The borrower has to sell the property and then use the proceeds to pay down the lender, or they have to refinance. In the event that they choose to refinance the property, their spread and return on cash flow, assuming rents are about the same as what they were, you know, the months leading up to that refi happening, are going to get into eaten into pretty dramatically. And so, you will see some material events. There were sponsors and investors out there who were over leveraging as much as they possibly could because of how low interest rates were. And so they haven't really bought down a lot of the principal investment. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna bode for what I'll call interesting times. And mm -hmm. that disruption starts this year. I don't think it's gonna be massive, but I gotta think some 2025 debt maturities are gonna be pretty uh, catastrophic for some people. And so I, we see opportunity in that. We see opportunity for groups on the franchise side and how that pertains to franchisees. You know, being able to capture better rent deals uh, from in certain markets. Some markets are just insanely hot, but uh, and really for investors to be able to pick up uh, op pick up good deals uh, on the real estate market through that, that debt maturity. We're we're excited about it. Uh, yeah, it's going to create a lot of opportunity out of the crisis that's going to be coming, right? One, sure. one way or the other. Sure. The only time I'm annoyed by it is when we're selling a property. <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, in general, we look at it as opportunity. Ab absolutely. Okay, got one last thing for you. So I typically interview founders of emerging brands. What's maybe some of the pieces of advice or some of the common conversations you're having specifically with emerging founders? It's interesting. I, I wear a couple of different hats, right? So I'm an AFC urgent care franchisee, and I've seen a brand that's probably at the tail end of emerging, AFC has a tremendous path for growth. There's only 350 of them open across the country. And it sound, that could sound like a big number, but when you look at the green space associated with that brand, I mean, you think about, we just ran into Laura Bradbury, who's VP of operations there, and Paige Robinson, who leads the franchise sales efforts. I don't, I'm not made to work for anybody anymore. Those, those days are over. I, I wasn't very, I probably wasn't the best employee of all time, uh, but I'm excited for, for the, my friends over there and the career path, like sort of the trajectory that that brand has. And, and then we also work with brands on the Zig side that are, you know, three, five, seven unit groups. And I, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It is fun as hell. I mean, we were talking about this before we got on and being able to be in the weeds and helping somebody else grow and scale their business, which I, we're not just mentors. We're certainly mentees of theirs too. I mean, I'm always constantly asking our operating friends, you know, how do you do your accounting? Like, what do you do to keep your employees happy when you can't offer them massive 
benefits in 401k packages when you have less than 10 employees. And so just being able to be in the weeds and knowing that those types of people are wired sort of similar to how you and I are, where it doesn't really matter if you call them on Saturday afternoon, that's like their hobby too. So <laughs> I, I get jacked up about it. It's, it's nothing but fun and bliss except for the you know, long nights where you're worried about your personal guarantees on your debts and stuff. It comes with the territory, right? That's part of it, yeah, but that's okay. We're, we're, we're all screwed up in the head who, who enjoy doing it. So, Aaron, thanks so much for being on. Appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Emerging Franchise Brands podcast. For additional insights, guest applications, and to stay connected, visit us at efbpodcast.com. The Emerging Franchise Brands podcast is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed do not necessarily represent those of Emerging Franchise Brands, its host Frank Fumi, or Emerging Franchise Group, LLC. Any discussed franchise or investment opportunity requires thorough investigation, obtaining proper disclosure documents, and expert consultation before making any investment decisions. The podcast and its host do not offer professional advice or endorsements, and they hold no responsibility for actions, representations, accuracy, or consequential damages related to the podcast content.